All right, everyone. So today we're going to be talking about my top five uh, favorite inshore lures. Now, um, when it comes to artificials, there's a lot of different uh, lures per se that I think are very effective. But just because the kind of fishing that I do, um, it might not make my top five list. Uh, this list is specifically for the South Florida area that I'm fishing, especially like Everglades National Park um, and Flamingo for that matter. So first uh, item on the list is a walking bait. Now, the walking bait is something that I use probably once or twice um, a day. And that's not two cast. I mean like two separate times in a day if I'm out there the whole day. And the main reason is because I'm, you only catch me throwing a top water like this uh, if it's really early in the morning, um, typically an hour you know, before the sun rises or an hour right there on the horizon and another hour before the sun goes down. And the reason I do that is because that's when the water seems to be the calmest. Uh, I don't think this is effective when you're, uh, you know, when it's the sun's right up in the sky, it's a little bit choppy. It really kind of destroys the purpose of this lure. The purpose is to use this in very, very calm, uh, lake-like water, glassy conditions. Um, and the reason for that is it swims best in those conditions and it also attracts fish best in those conditions. So if you're out in the morning, uh, if you're the kind of fisherman who goes out real early, which is 90% of us, um, definitely take one of these with you. And um, the really cool thing about this lure too is if there's any fish that are, you know, popping on the surface in about a foot of water or so, this is something I would throw. So when it's really early in the morning and you see like redfish tailing or something um, of that caliber, this is a great lure to really entice their attention and kind of break up that surface and get them to um, commit to a topwater bite. So to summarize the walking bait, great for anglers who are out there early morning um, and also want to capitalize on a topwater hit uh, when the you know redfish, snook, or anything is really popping up on the surface early morning or late in the evening. Great lure. Number two on the list is a paddle tail. Um, and by the way, these aren't ordered from best to worst. It's just my top five. So the paddle tail is great for snook. You know, especially down here in South Florida, I'll drive to a jetty or a bridge. The first thing I'm throwing out is a paddle tail. I just love the way they swim in the water and snook love paddle tails. So there's a lot of different ways to get on these snook. Um, some people might use the mirror lure or, um, you know, some other sort of twitch bait. But the paddle tail is great for kind of letting sit on the bottom. This one actually has an indentation and this is the way it would sit um, at the bottom and it would kind of kick. Um, and it's also great for just trolling back and not even jerking it to be honest just let it do its magic and uh, use the paddle tail and I like this so much because of the motion um, a lot of these baits are really great and they receive instinctive hits uh, but this is just so lifelike that I think it genuinely uh, convinces these fish that it's real so you can never go wrong with a paddle tail I think because the versatility always have a paddle tail in your tackle box if you're inshore fishing um, I recommend the storm bait because they're cheap a buddy of mine actually just got three of these on Amazon for about, I think it was four bucks. So three in one pack for four bucks, that's pretty good um, considering that these last a very long time and I think Walmart might actually have them uh, cheaper for longer. So now that I showed you guys the Storm Bay Paddle Tail, I wanna show you guys a more expensive alternative which is the Live Target Pinfish. Um, this is a really expensive lure, I'm talking $12 a pop. It comes with a stationary hook and the option to add a treble hook or a circle hook. I prefer a circle hook because a lot of times with these uh, bucket mouth fish, the treble hook doesn't really get a good enough uh, hook set and it kind of pops out. So I'll go with the circle hook mostly when I'm adding on to these lures. Talking about the live target, it's expensive for a reason and it's because they put so much work into these lures. I mean, when you swim this bait, it looks so lifelike. It literally looks like a pinfish uh, in the water swimming and the fish are really deceived by this uh, lure. So it's a great lure for anybody who's got $12 to spare um, because you're probably gonna end up losing this within the month if you're fishing a lot. And I can vouch for this lure mostly because I've used this out in Flamingo and the snook go crazy for this pinfish lure. And I think it's because it's so closely replicated to what they're naturally eating uh, down in Everglades National Park or Flamingo for that matter. Um, and this works in Flamingo of course, but it'll work just about any place that there's pinfish or any sort of white baits on the flats or um, hanging out in the mangroves. Throw something really close to what the fish are eating and you'll, you'll see really good results. Now, do I think it's worth the extra 12 bucks? To be honest, I, I really don't. Um, instead of buying this, I would definitely go ahead and just purchase a storm bait uh, or any paddle tail for that matter. Um, even if you're using just a regular jig head and you throw on a, a paddle tail soft bait, I think that's honestly probably better in terms of budget and pricing uh, versus the pinfish. 
they've both got me on a ton of fish, but I don't think one has done better than the other. This one just looks a lot better, it's fancier, and it might swim a tad, uh, a tad better. But if they're eating, they're eating. Bottom line with the uh, soft baits and paddle tails, I would definitely check out the storm bait. Number three uh, brings me to a twitch bait. This twitch bait is the Miro Lure Miro Dean. Um, this is the smaller version of the typical Miro Lure you guys see a lot. The reason I like this Miro Lure so much is because it's so um, broad. I, I've caught so many different things with this. This is a mid-range bait, uh, so that means that it's you know right in the mid-water. It's not at the top, not at the bottom, it's right smack in the middle. And me personally, this is just a personal preference. I really do um, enjoy the uh, mid-water uh, bites and the mid-water lures just because I tend to catch more at that range uh, throughout the whole entire uh, day. And that's just maybe because of the areas that I'm fishing, the times that I fish, but this thing puts me on so many snook, it's not even funny. So, out of all these baits that I'm gonna show you, I do think, personally, the mirror lure is probably the best lure, um, just because it's durability and its ability to put you on a variety of different fish. I've caught snook, sea trout, tarpon, and tons of other fish using this lure. So, um, definitely a really good lure. And it's so simple, but it's so replica, uh, it's such a good replica of the uh, fish that are being eaten by these snook and tarpon down um, where I fish. And I think it's because a lot of these fish are eating greenbacks, um, and this is basically like a pilchard greenback hybrid of some sort. Um, and they do a really great job of making simplistic baits that get you on fish. So, great bait. Definitely highly re recommend the mirror lure. Um, if you guys are in shore fishing, definitely don't leave the docks uh, without a mirror lure in your tackle box. This thing will put you on so many fish and uh, great for the midwater bite. Number four brings me to a shrimp uh, artificial. Um, this is not the shrimp artificial I normally use. I usually use voodoo shrimps. The only reason I'm not showing you a voodoo shrimp right now is because it actually melted in my tackle box. Uh, I left it outside in the sun and it was about 85, 88 degrees down here in South Florida and it just melted right through the uh, shrimp. So no worries, um, I'm gonna go ahead and use this shrimp as an example um, and kind of talk about why shrimp is so important for inshore fishermen. So shrimp is important mostly because every fish that's inshore is, is feeding on shrimp one way or another. That's tarpon, snook, sea trout, redfish, all these fish are munching on uh, shrimp. So if you're really wanting to get on the uh, inshore bite, it definitely helps to have a uh, artificial shrimp on you at all times. It's very versatile and you can use them just about anywhere. So what brand of shrimp do I normally use? That's gonna be a voodoo shrimp. So the reason I like the voodoo shrimp is because it has a hinged tail. And this one actually has a hinged tail as well, but the other one is a little bit more hinged that there's gaps in between the tail. And whenever you twitch it, it's kind of like a, uh, a jerking motion and it looks very, very real. So a lot of fish, if you're gonna be putting uh, shrimp on a popping cork, a lot of times these things settle to the bottom vertically. Now, that's cool and all when you're popping it, but when you're not moving it and it's sitting like this, it could, it could really scare the fish and it could be a, an, a very unnatural presentation. The voodoo shrimp sits like this at its neutral state. So when you're not moving it, you're not jerking it, it's still sitting horizontally. And I think that's one of the reasons why I like the voodoo shrimp so much. Uh, the voodoo shrimp has worked for me in a lot of scenarios, but there's actually a lot of other scenarios where the gulp has been a lot better. So when I'm running a gulp shrimp, I want to put a jig head at the front um, and go ahead and attach the gulp to the back. And it's been great for attracting redfish and sea trout. Uh, that's usually what I use the gulp shrimp for. And the gulp is kind of an unfair advantage per se. And that's because the gulp shrimp is scented. And it's actually so scented and the fish like it so much that a lot of people will actually cut the gulp shrimp into pieces and use it as a dead shrimp substitute. So a lot of people are actually catching sheep's head, uh, mangrove snapper, and pinfish using cut up gulp shrimp. So that just shows you how effective the scent of the gulp shrimp is. And I think it really gives us inshore fishermen a huge advantage when targeting uh, sea trout uh, and basically any edible fish. So if you're an inshore fisherman, you definitely need some sort of shrimp in your tackle box. Everything's eating it, it'll get you on fish. Number five on the list is the bucktail jig. And I know a lot of people really aren't too reliant on the bucktail. The reason why I like the bucktail so much is because the juvie tarpon absolutely love these things. Um, and me personally, I'm fishing a lot of juvenile tarpon in uh, Flamingo and uh, basically all of Everglades National Park. And juvenile tarpon is basically any tarpon that's over 25 pounds in my opinion. Um, those are typically your mid-range to juvies. 
Um, but these Juvie Tarpon love the bucktail jig. And the reason why I chose the bucktail jig to even be on the uh, top five is because the simplicity of the lure and how effective it really is, at least in my scenarios. So the bucktail jig is great for basically very calm areas. You're in between uh, maybe like a barrier of mangroves and you're targeting some Juvie Tarpon. I've always had the best luck uh, using it like that. A lot of people also like to throw these to the bottom at piers and they'll get bigger versions of these bucktail jigs. You go to a pier, you let it sit at the bottom uh, in the sand and they kind of pop it up and down just like this. Boom, giant snook um, will attack that. And my favorite form of bucktail jig is actually a flare hawk. Um, I didn't have a flare hawk. This would, instead of showing you this bucktail, I probably would have showed you a flare hawk. Um, I couldn't get one because a lot of the stores are closed. Um, but I'm gonna put one right here. This is a flare hawk jig, amazing, amazing lure, especially when targeting uh, snook. And, and tarpon too, the juvie tarpon really do like the flare hawk, but I've noticed that's more of like a snook attracting uh, uh, bait compared to this one. This is purely tarpon. Uh, tarpon just love the bucktail jig. But that flare hawk is amazing, and it's always gonna be on my top five um, when it comes to inshore fishing, along with the bucktail jig attracts a ton of fish and the way I use the flare hawk in small water um, about one to two feet I'll let it sit at the bottom and I'll kind of do that thing I was telling you that other people do at the pier with the larger versions um, and I'll just kind of pop up dust with it really attracts those snook that are looking at the bottom for food um, at the end of the day uh, snook do eat a lot of uh, top water um, items and midwater items but they're also looking at the floor um, to see what's what's uh, an easy meal that they could pick up so if you're ever at a jetty you're fishing at night along bridges, sink your flare hawk or bucktail jig to the bottom, let it sit there and start jerking it up and down as you slowly reel back to shore. I guarantee you if there's a snook in the area, it's gonna commit. They absolutely love these bucktail um, and flare hawk uh, jigs. Now the smaller version of the flare hawk is called the peahawk and actually ironically love to use that one for peacock bass because it's got a tail, um, like you saw in that picture, it's got a tail that kind of extends out uh, and it really does do a really nice motion in the water um, and it really does attract these inshore fish, peacock bass and even largemouth bass for that matter. So once again guys, that's my top five. Uh, this is the top five lures that's worked best for me. There were so many other lures to choose from. I was just thinking from the past uh, couple uh, fishing trips that I've gone on, those lures have been absolutely amazing to me and have put me on the fish. So really quick, I wanna talk about um, I'm going to make a video about this separately, but really quick, since I showed you the top five lures that I use, I want to show you um, the perfect colors to use of these lures. So if you're in really dark water, you really want to try using a darker colored lure um, that's darker than the water. So this allows the fish to kind of pinpoint and target what's moving in the water. Those light colored baits, they probably won't see as well in the muddy water, like down in Flamingo or Everglades National Park, or just about any area that's an estuary where fresh water is meeting salt, uh, causing a lot of turbulence and, and mucky water. So in those scenarios, you wanna use a root beer colored DOA, you wanna use a darker colored uh, twitch bait, and just about anything that provides a silhouette or really, really keen to on target to these fish, um, something that they can easily find without actually scenting um, the bait, uh, like a gulp shrimp or something like that. These uh, hard bait twitch baits are scentless. So in murky water, um, if you're throwing artificial, try to throw a darker colored water that's typically a little bit darker, if not roughly the same color as the water. This will help tremendously uh, when getting on fish in darker water. Now in clearer water, you have a lot more freedom. I like to just go natural. Um, whatever they're eating naturally in that clear water, try to present your artificials identically to what they look like and what they swim like. So, perfect example, um, I love using the mirror lure in those light off-colored waters. Maybe it's a little bit murky, but it's more to the light side. Mirror lure is absolutely phenomenal because it looks just like the baits that they're picking off in the mangroves. So once again, guys, that's my top five. Uh, if this helped you in any way, shape, or form, leave a like, subscribe, and comment below something that you guys might wanna see in the future. Um, I plan on going out there and actually making a couple of fishing videos I want to do peacock bass, bonefish, and a lot of fishing videos to show you guys how I'm targeting them and uh, at the end of the day, just show you guys some cool action. So leave a like, subscribe, comment, and I'll see you guys later.